This show has been made possible with the continued support of Partners.io, your global gambling and betting affiliate program. Hello, all my friends out there. It is time for another stroll through the minefield of online gambling news. And the more time I spend in this industry, the more I truly believe that a minefield is in fact the best analogy. You see, a minefield is designed to do two things. First, it deceives. Second, it injures. After all, those who plant mines in a field don't want you to see them until it's too late. And that's exactly the same attitude that regulators in the United Kingdom have toward our industry, no matter how carefully operators tread. For example, the UK's Advertising Standards Authority recently banned what they are calling an advert, but was actually just a tweet from Ladbrokes. And while I am not Ladbrokes' biggest fan, I must admit that I understand their frustration in this situation as well as the frustration that other UK operators must certainly be feeling at this point. The tweet, which got called an ad and then subsequently was banned by the ASA, featured boxer Jake Paul and a question about his career. That's all. There was no promotional offer. There was no call to action. There wasn't even a damn link to Ladbrokes. Furthermore, the tweet was age restricted, and yet here comes the ASA with their big fat butt pushing themselves to the front and pulling down a tweet that wasn't even an advertisement and quite honestly was probably not even in their purview. And we in the industry apparently have no recourse to this bullshit overreach. Our friends at the Betting and Gaming Council undoubtedly saw situations like this coming. In fact, it was just last month that they were calling for new measures of cooperation between operators, the UK government, and social media companies, noting that operators are trying to act responsibly but they need the help of all parties involved. And yet, organizations like the ASA just keep right on banning ads and, and tweets. And the UKGC just keeps right on fining operators. I've got an idea. What if, and, and just hear me out here, what if there was a system in place where, where operators could submit their ads for approval and if they got pre-approved, then, then we knew it wouldn't result in a ban or a fine. And, and if they didn't get approved, they were told what was wrong, and then they could fix it and have the opportunity to do the right thing without pissing anybody off. Would that, would that be too easy? Would that eliminate confusions and bans and fines? Is that too much to ask? Or would doing that just take away some of the power of the government and uh, cut out a nice little side income that they have coming in. latest edition of the GPWA Times Magazine is hot off the press and it's on its way to the IGB Live Conference in Amsterdam. Of course, you and I don't have to wait or even travel to the Netherlands to get our hands on a digital copy for free with articles on the strengths and weaknesses of using artificial intelligence as a writing tool 
It also has interviews with affiliates and affiliate managers and additional stories on the UK's Gambling Act white paper, crypto payments, Parasite SEO, and more. You can download your free digital copy at gpwatimes.org. Also, an update on a story I mentioned last week as the Big Step Group of Britain is not happy with the continuing sponsorships on football jerseys. Despite a decision from Premier League to end such agreements by 2025, several teams and gambling companies are, are working together to get these deals done right up to the last minute, but people who oppose it don't like it because they say it can cause addiction. And as you all know, a name on a jersey is much more likely to cause addiction than the dozens of billboards and betting shops people pass en route to the stadiums. Hmm. And in Australia, a parliamentary committee is pushing a ban for online gambling ads during sporting events as a way to, you know it, fight addiction. Because, as we all know, addicts must see an advertisement in order to act upon their addiction, right? I mean, that's why no one is addicted to cigarettes anymore, or liquor, or meth, or porn, or cocaine. There are no addicts to those things anymore. Why? Because they're not advertised on television. That's why. All right, I've made my sarcastic point. I'm out of here. I'll be back next week to do it again, God willing. And provided I don't have a freaking migraine, The latest edition of the GPWA Times Magazine is hot off the press and it's on its way to the IGB Live Conference in Amsterdam. Of course, you and I don't have to wait for our digital co-